Case and Pascal Ackerman riding at the back of his UAA train towards the back. We're not seeing Caden Groves, though, being ridden for with Alpacine de Koenig here. No, we haven't seen them for a little while there, but we did see them for a number of kilometres and uh, we could see uh, uh, um, Layson, he was really suffering, he was pulling faces big time. Uh, uh, we can see in the front of the peloton is that uh, Pascalone is actually pulling there. He'll be a one normally wait until the very end for the sprint, but of course they know, you know the advantage out of the two is just uh, too great now, and uh, it's looking in the uh, better, much better now for the two men in front with 5.5 to go. Seven seconds per kilometre, that's what they've got up their sleeve. The peloton needs to pull seven seconds per kilometre, every kilometre on the way in. Five and a half to go, 39 seconds. This is going to be super close. And not everybody pulling at the front here, Sean, is interested in bringing it back for a sprint, are they? You've got the GC teams up there now, like Ineos Grenadiers, who want to keep their team up. They're different objectives at the front as well, and that's not going to help. Yes, yeah, well, you can see Sivakov there from Ineos, and he seems to be just trying to slow it up because, you know, Geron Thomas was just after getting back, so he's probably just giving them a chance to get up to the front. As we see, they're starting to arrive on the uh, left-hand side of a picture here, and that doesn't help. Every you know little obstruction into the corners, or if you have a rider who's following and not taking up the uh, pull on the front, that just uh, obstructs the chase here. And yeah, 49 seconds, 4.8 to go. Uh, it looks like it's going to be between these, these two guys for the stage victory. Then Marky, don't look back, don't look back, because reinforcements are coming here. They're going to try and slow this up if they can as well. Jake Orlula at the front, surely. Well, they're doing two things. They've got to be at the front for Michael Matthews. If he gets brought back, they want to set him up for the sprint. But they're not going to go to the front and increase the pace, but they've got to be there ready to pounce in case their teammate is caught just in the final run to the line. And I must admit, I am shocked that Alpes and de Koenig have not come to the front for Caden Groves. Bahrain victorious through the centre. There's no real organisation now in the chase. It's all over the road. There's 4.3 kilometres to go and only another couple of seconds go on the right-hand side. Jake Lula take that position on the right and, well, Remco Evenepoel in the centre. This is looking good for the breakaway. It's theirs to lose now. And just up to the right, Alperson de Kooning, hand in the air for Caden Groves, waving his hand. I'm not sure what at, but Alperson de Kooning starting to ride towards the front, but making no move to increase the pace and catch the break. 4K to go, 37 seconds. I'm back to the studio for the breakaway, and I'm going to go and bite my nails. <laughs> what was it? One out of 99 or one I gave out of it 99, but if I'm going to be wrong, I want to be wrong for Simon Clark. <laughs> 3.8 kilometres to go. Thanks, Robbie. You better hear from Robbie alongside Orla, Adam, and our special guest, Jonathan Volters, on tonight's breakaway. It's the breakaway. Who looks like it's going to take the stage, though. It was a breakaway that took the honours last year in Naples. This year, it looks as though we have gone for the same conclusion. Four kilometres to go for the peloton, and given what happened yesterday, it's the GC teams now who are trying to keep all of their leaders safe. Geraint Thomas has had a bit of a hiccup mechanically, safely back in the peloton. Same with Primoz Roglic as we go to the three kilometre to go banner, 33 seconds for De Marchi and Clark, but they must still ride together until the very last to give themselves a chance. Just as I say that, Alpes into Koenig start to come through with one last effort for Caden Groves. But Sean Kelly, is it too little, too late? Well, I think it's uh, too late. Uh, you know, these guys now are going to continue. They know they've got the experience as well. I think they will just continue to you know, share the pulling on the front in this final uh, three kilometres here. And uh, the surprise one, Alpes into Koenig, did not take it up much earlier. I think it's uh, too late. 31 seconds now, Bora Hansgrohe trying to keep Leonard Kemner and Alexander Vlasov safe. Magnus Kurtz doing the same job for the likes of Hugh Carthy on the right as we look at it. Left and side, Pavel Sivakov keeping both Theo Gegenhardt and Geraint Thomas safe. We go inside three kilometres to go and there will be a collective sigh of relief at the minute for those in the general classification. Now, Maya Rosa's in that bunch there, and he will keep that jersey for a third successive day, Andreas Lechnes. And we did see Alpacine de Koenig come to the front, and they've disappeared again. Yes, rapidly. They just made your... To the front, uh, we see the two uh, teammates of uh, Caden Groves, uh, 
Uldani and Kunchi, uh, you know, they looked like they were going to really uh, try and give, you know, a full-on effort as long as possible, but disappeared as quickly. On the cobbled streets of Naples as they twist and turn coming around. There's a couple more left turns to go. Six turns, by the way, between kilometres three and one. Not too much to worry about, though, with the sprinters not close enough behind yet. Simon Clark looks behind, but he's got to keep his head on the road out in front. 23 seconds as it's a final final throw of the dice for Trek Segafredo and Bahrain victorious if they can it goes down by another couple of seconds will it be heartbreak if they hesitate just that one bit then it's back in favour of these behind yes well they can't hesitate if they do well then you know, they're going to get swallowed up in the final run to the line uh, so yeah the they have to continue on just uh, sharing the pace, uh, pulling on the front here. As you can see, you know, the gap is quite a good one, but again, the peloton, you know, new uh, riders coming to the front, and that is, uh, you know, of huge importance at this late stage. Oh, he looks back behind, and that's the side he didn't want to see. Alessandro De Marchi there, and it might well be heartbreak now, because 17 seconds is the gap. They're not yet into the final kilometre, and suddenly there's a mass of riders with all all the million colours of Napoli that it's famous for are approaching behind. The whole peloton is approaching on them. One kilometre to go for our two breakaway days on what should be the most beautiful stage in the world. But is it going to be the most beautiful victory from a breakaway? They've been around Vesuvius. They fended off the Amalfi Coast. And the peloton is approaching behind, 700 metres for them now. It looks like they should have it, but they're going to race, they're going to try. And here comes Alpacinda Koenig. They're going to ramp it up behind with the sprinters ready to pounce. But the kilometres have ticked away. It's now down to hundreds of metres to think about it, to look each other, to know when to launch, to know when to go. There's an opportunity for a Giro d'Italia stage win for the first time in the career of either Simon Clark or Alessandro De Marchi. Formerly teammates, they've ridden as brothers today and they're now 500 metres away from glory. But behind, just take a look at that. Movistar, Alpacinda Koenig and the rest are on them. They're looking, they're trying to catch them. 350 metres now as they come behind. Clark on the left in the darker jersey. It's the blue and white of De Marchi on the left as we look at it now and the sprint is launched. 250 metres to go, it's heartbreak, they're going to be caught. And there goes Fernando Gaviria. Gaviria at the front being chased down by Consonni. On the left-hand side, they'll try and come around him. There is Milan, 100 metres to go. It's a heart attack sprint here in Napoli. Peterson's there, Gaviria's caught. And finally, it's Mas Peterson who completes the Peter Slam. How on earth did they not make it? 200 metres from the line. And the heroes were caught.